backwards brains. <clears throat> so today I uncover a concept called backwards brains. Um, some of my other videos I talked about the three different brains or the crocodile brain, the midbrain, and the neocortex. So <clears throat> when we're first born, the crocodile brain is operating. It's what allows us to breathe and it focuses on basic survival. I need food, I need water, I need shelter, and I need air. So four basic uh, prerequisites to live on this planet. And if you're missing any one of them, any one of them, one of them for a long enough time, you're going to die. So <clears throat> when we get pain, usually it's a signal by the brain letting us know that our ability to get food, water, and shelter or air is compromised. That's all it means. And there's a call to action to do something. It means stop, take a look, or it could be, you know, some other things that are going on. But <clears throat> so the brain to, to get food, water, and shelter, um, the prerequisite to do that is movement. So in my book, Miracles of Minutes, I'll make it real, real simple for you. Can you breathe and can you move? And is your breathing and movement connected? Now, uh, I'm a big supporter of Gray Cook um, and the guys over at Functional Movement Screen. Uh, I think they've done a great job. What is a functional movement screen? It's seven basic patterns that a human being can do. Can you reach with your right arm? Can you reach with your left arm? Can you sort of stand on one leg? Um, can you balance? Um, can you keep your stuff together? Can you squat? Can you roll over? You know, so, so basic movement patterns that we stages we went through in early childhood development is kind of what the FMS is built upon. Now, that has nothing to do with running, fast, or playing sports or anything else, but has everything to do with it because all our movements, human movements, are going to the gym or based upon that. Now, backwards brain. What am I talking about? So let's cover the neocortex or the thinking mind. When we think a lot, it burns a lot of energy. So what I see a lot of people do after they look at the FMS, one of the things I, when I do the screen, I like the quadruped uh, test, all fours, like a crawling position, raise your right arm, raise your left leg, like crawling. And I ask them, are you breathing? So if they're moving and not breathing, I don't think the brain's gonna give you a reward for that. Doesn't make sense. So I can then deduce from seeing that small primitive pattern then when they go up to running, they may not be breathing well. They may be breathing short and shallow, so you get the cramp in the rib cage, your diaphragm cramping. So what happens is what people do sometimes in that pattern, raise your right arm and left leg. They go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think about that. I shut them down. And the reason why I shut them down is because the thinking brain is trying to do something that the crocodile brain is supposed to do. Can the thinking brain do that? Absolutely. It sure can. However, this is what you're going to see. I'm going to let you look at it at the end of life. So you're going to see an elderly person. They're so tired making a few steps because they have to think about every movement they make. You can see when they drive a car, they drive slow. Why? Because the reaction times are slow. You can't use thinking to react to life. You can't think and hit a baseball. You can't think and shoot a basketball. You're not going to do it. It's just, it happens too fast. You cannot coordinate 626 muscles, 120 bones in symphony, in perfect timing to connect that together. So why do that in rehabilitation? It doesn't make sense. So I just want to cover that backwards brain. So a lot of, you know, personal trainers and like, Hey, you know, you need to fire your glute more or do this and that. Like, I, I mean, sometimes it's a good cue and sometimes it isn't. We want to, that system, your brain to turn that muscle on automatically or introduce a stimulus or a cue, usually not a verbal cue or make someone think to turn on their butt cheek. It should just turn on. Sometimes you can use that strategy, but a lot of times I don't like to use that. I'd rather find out what's got them held up and why it's not happening automatically or autonomically. So, backwards brain. A lot of people who have movement issues, you have a chum, clumsy child, your performance in your sport's going down, your running times, uh, you're becoming more fatigued in running, usually you have a backwards brain where your thinking mind's trying to control movement, um, you can't relax and just breathe, you can't relax and move. So, 
that's a good time to do a breakout on you do an FMS breakout check your basic patterns um, I do that in my office what I use in my in the what I recommend using the book miracles and minutes or you can do an SFMA which is more of the clinician side the chiropractor side the physical therapist side uh, someone who has professional skills would break you out in different patterns and kind of figure out what's kind of going on in there so I use some FMS stuff I use some SFMA stuff um, these are terms the average person may not understand but I don't really use that lexicon in the book I use some very simple things to kind of get your body going again but I just want to share with you if you're a personal trainer you're a chiropractor to understand what it, or, or, or physician who specializes in rehabilitation and getting someone back to being healthy and functioning again of something to look for and understanding the brain a little bit better the person could be thinking to move and I would uh, check that off as a, as a movement error I would not let them progress through that I would back them up to something simpler and have them find out how to do it more authentically thanks a lot have a great day